Welcome into PFF TV, Shannon Ford alongside Cam Meller, and today we're going to talk about just a few of the Eckridge All-Americans heading into college football week one. Of course, there were a couple college football games last weekend, but Labor Day is the real kickoff. So who better to start with than the human highlight reel wide receiver out of Clemson, Justin Ross. Justin Ross, the human highlight reel, you did say it. Sloppy games week one, probably not so sloppy, especially if we're talking about Ross, a guy who averaged 4.98 yards per route run. A ridiculous mark of efficiency when you talk about 3.0 sort of being our benchmark. Anywhere above 4 is absolutely unheard of, and 4.98, approaching 5 in that metric is crazy good. The highest graded true freshman at wide receiver we've ever seen. And thankfully, for college football fans, for Clemson fans, and maybe not for ACC teams, team fans, two more years at least of Lawrence and Ross. Those two are going to be fun to watch for the next two years, if I may say so myself. At least. All right, moving on to the other side of the ball. We've got Grant Delpit at safety for LSU. This is a guy whose numbers from 2017 to 2018 vastly improved. Can we expect to see another rise in 2019? Yes, okay. I do think so. He improved across the board last year. He improved at everything that we want to see a safety improve, a defensive back improve, high coverage grades. Outside of a few missed tackles, 18 to be precise. If he shores that up, tightens that up, then he does have a lock on the first defensive back taken in the next year's draft, if not the first defensive player taken in the draft. He's that good. Leader in total pressures, so when he does blitz, he gets home. Doesn't allow a whole lot of deep plays. And, uh, you know, again, missed tackles aside, he is awesome. Truly a missile to the football. Okay, another duo we have to talk about, a duo from Oklahoma. Running back duo, Sermon and Brooks. These are two guys... The Oklahoma run block grades aren't as strong as you would think based on these guys' performance, but that just proves that they do a lot of it themselves. They do. Trey Sermon, Kennedy Brooks, they get it done a little bit differently. Brooks averages 8.8 yards per attempt. That's crazy good. Kind of like Ross, these guys all are crazy good in these metrics. Sermon, though, has his place already in the PFF record books, forcing missed tackles per carry at the second and fourth highest rates of any, anywhere in our history, the guy who has first and third in that, now playing with the Chicago Bears, David Montgomery. Sermon has maybe the best jump cut in all of college football, while Brooks just does it play in, play out, carry in, carry out through the middle of the defense. Sermon is a guy on the outside. They are truly quite the duo and uh, quite the trio at running back with Jalen Hurts as well. And they start their season against Houston, whose run block grades really depreciated as the season went on last year. So it'll be interesting to see how they step up their game in this week one. The true Ed Oliver effect. Oliver stops playing near the end of the season. The run block or run defense grades plummet. All right, moving on. Let's talk a little bit about J.R. Reed out of Georgia. Again, same thing we kind of like with Grant Delpit. Does everything you want him to has improved. Fifth highest two-year coverage grade in Power 5. Awesome guy in coverage, does not allow a reception just of 6.1 yards as the primary coverage defender. So for a safety who typically lines up at least 8 to 9 to 10 yards off the line of scrimmage to allow lower than that in, in his yards per completion, just awesome coverage, a missile to the football like Delpit. Also like Delpit, though, needs to shore up on the missed tackles. Had 16 of them last year. So you see that number decrease, his grade increase, and that's where we see him pushing Delpit for maybe first safety trait taken in the draft. All right, the next guy we're going to look at and the final guy we're going to look at from East Coast moving to the West Coast, we're looking at Paulson Adebo, cornerback out of Stanford, perhaps forgotten because he's on the West Coast, but he's a lock at cornerback. All he does is lock down receivers, and if he were on the East Coast, if he were in the SEC, if he were playing for one of these major team, major market teams at noon at 3.30 on Saturdays, he is truly in the conversation for best corner in the country. 19 pass breakups last year, another handful of interceptions. But what he does best is his tight coverage causes incompletions. We saw it time in and time out. Over a quarter of his targeted passes, he forced incomplete, whether that was through tight coverage, getting his hand on the ball or whatnot. He is as locked down as they come in college football. And Stanford opens up their season against Northwestern, a team who hasn't publicly decided on the starting quarterback for the season. So it'll be interesting to see how he kind of adjusts his, his blocking with whoever comes out onto the yeah. field. Coach, Fitzger Coach Fitzgerald is holding that one quite tight to the vest there. So we'll see. Hunter Johnson most likely. Welcome. Welcome to some cross-conference football. Oh, it's going to be fun. Going to be a lot of fun. All right, you probably didn't hear names like Trevor Lawrence. We touched on him a little bit because the full list is at pff.com by my guy Cam Meller. So go there to check it out and make sure to hit that big red button to subscribe to PFF TV. Shannon Ford, Cam Meller, signing off. You want to get rid of me and get back to more great PFF YouTube content? All you have to do is push that button right there and subscribe. Thanks for watching.